Hey everyone, Paul here from G-Shocker. Today I'm going to attempt to convert this negative display King aka GXW56 to a red positive display. Pretty ambitious and I'm not convinced I'm going to be successful, but let's see what happens. Be optimistic Paul, be optimistic. If you do happen to own a negative G-Shock watch, the chances are you'll know the pain when trying to view the digits in certain lights. You really do need optimal conditions to get a good view of the screen, which isn't ideal when you want to glance across and look at the time and you can't see a thing. So what you're going to need before getting started is a Phillips screwdriver, ideally a PH00, a craft blade, adhesive remover, a polarizing film, either black, red, or whichever color you want to use. Black is much easier to get hold of. A couple of microfiber cloths, an air can or dust blower device of some kind, and lots and lots of time and patience. Always removing the straps when taking the back off the watch, otherwise they will most definitely get in the way. So you're gonna take your Phillips screwdriver, again, ideally the PH00, that really is the sweet spot for most G-Shock watches. You want to avoid stripping the screws, which can happen if you're using a screwdriver that's not the right size. Same screwdriver for the back plate. Again, take your time. If you rush or use a screwdriver that's the wrong size, it's really easy to strip the screw heads and once you strip the screw heads, they can either get stuck in or they can be difficult to get back in. So do take your time when removing the screws. Just a quick tip so you don't have the same problem removing this back rubber piece. Don't forget to remove the side screws which are typically to hold the bezel in place but it does also hold that rubber um, back plate in place too. So now that back rubber piece will just peel straight off. Just take it off and set it to one side. As you can see, the gasket has already come off and is stuck to the back plate on mine. Now you want to just remove the additional seals and place them off to one side. Keep them all in some kind of a logical order. And now that we've got the back off, we want to remove the module. You're probably not going to be able to do this with your hands. And so you're probably going to want to use something like a toothpick, a plastic tool of some kind. But in this instance, I'm going to use my long nose tweezers. Now at this point, turn the watch case upside down just to prevent any buildup of dust. And there we have it, our GXW56 module. And now it's time to open this thing up. This is where things might get a little bit intimidating for some of you, but don't worry, as long as you're gentle and keep the parts in order, you'll be fine, probably. Through the metal frame, I use a pair of long nose tweezers. You'll need to unhook the tiny latches around the edges of the module. Really do take your time here. The last thing you want is to bend the frame out of shape or have the whole thing pop open with springs flying everywhere. So once you've released the latches, you can gently lift off the frame and just set it to one side for now. And now for the next part, and yes, it is a bit scarier as we're going to get into the guts of the module. So start by gently lifting away the back section that holds the circuit board, and again, put that safely to one side. Now you should see four tiny springs. The two on the outside are to connect the LED to the circuit board and the two in the middle are part of the tough solar. 
Although I haven't done it in this instance, it's best just to remove all four springs, set them to one side, otherwise you'll have a nightmare with them just falling out all over the place and you'll probably end up losing one or two of them. I've spent many a night on all fours with a headlamp, magnifying glass, searching for these micro springs in the office several hours later and they're still missing. It's a nightmare. You do not want to lose those springs. Now you'll also see two thin rubber strips. These are to connect the LCD to the circuit board. Just remove those and set them to one side. They're both identical, um, so don't worry about getting them mixed up. They can go back in any order. And now you're ready to pop the screen out. So if you haven't pooped your pants yet, you may well now, because this next step is by far the scariest. First time I did it, I was almost certain that I was either going to already had broken the LTD. So we need to remove the polarizer, which is basically the top layer of the screen. It's glued down and needs to be carefully peeled off, kind of hacked off really with a craft knife. And it'll feel, it'll feel like you're about to snap the LCD or that the LCD is about to burst or, or something, but it's tougher than it looks. And so far I haven't broken one. Just go really slowly and be very gentle and do watch your fingers. It's easy to slip and cut yourself as I have found out in the past. I'll try and get a close up of this screen for you here so you can see the polarizer. You're basically peeling off that very top layer Go super slow. I can't express this enough. Just slowly but surely nudge your way forward with the knife, kind of wiggling it from side to side, and you'll find you making progress. Just keep taking the, the, the craft knife back out, putting it back in, wiggling it. You start to feel too much friction, just take it out and start from another angle. Again, just be careful you don't slip, especially as you come towards the end and the polarizer is about to release. It's easy to slip and cut your hands open. As you can see, it's not a quick job. It took a good five minutes just to remove the polarizer and now we're left with a load of sticky, goopy residue, which will probably take even longer to remove. Do you want to spray on the adhesive remover? probably just let it sit for a few minutes I haven't in this example because I'm lazy and impatient but if I wasn't lazy and impatient I'd give it five minutes to sit and just do its thing you'll probably take a few goes as well of spray wipe spray wipe to get all of that gunk off I've also found that as well as using the um, the microfiber cloths you can also use your finger to kind of just or your nail to just push some of that gunk towards the edge of the screen and just kind of remove it and get it off of the screen so you're not constantly rubbing it all around. If you're going to use the craft knife like I am in this example, be careful not to scratch the screen. I'm just trying to remove some of that excess gunk. So I finally got it clean and as I say it takes longer than removing the polarizer itself. So now we want to make our new polarizer. So if your old polarizer is in good shape, you can use it as a template. If not, don't worry, you can trace around the LCD frame. Don't worry about marking the polarizer because it has a protective layer on both sides. So you can use a Sharpie or whatever you need to to create the, the template. Now, I don't know if you know this, but it still blows my mind, but polarizers are both positive and negative depending on the orientation. So be sure to position yours correctly before cutting the template. There's been many times, even with that knowledge, that I've created my template, put it onto the screen, and I got it the wrong way around. Very frustrating. Just take your time when cutting out. And as I say, I've messed up more than a few times in the past, but don't stress, you can just start over and cut a new one. So now that that's cut to size, let's test it out. So I've got a black and a red one here, because I'm thinking of doing a 50-50 split half positive red and half positive black. So before applying the polarizer, do a final dust check. 
trust me, one stray speck of dust under the film will haunt you forever. Or is that just me? Just a quick note, apologies. I paused the camera and forgot to hit record again. So you've missed me fumbling about trying to put the module back together. Sorry guys. If you do get stuck putting the module back together, just rewind the video, watch it from the beginning and follow the instructions in reverse. Anyway, here it is. It's looking pretty good, right? So let's pop the module back in and just make sure it's seated properly. Use your tweezers to gently press the button, ar button arms. Is that what they're called? Let's call them button arms. So let's push those button arms on the metal frame back into place so that everything fits properly. And if you remove the gasket, make sure it goes back in and sits perfectly. I don't know about you, but I think that's looking pretty sweet. Really happy with that, that twin tone, uh, more dual tone look, I think really suits the watch. Now we're gonna replace all of the um, seals, gaskets, you might want to actually grease the gasket. In this instance, I haven't, again, because I am lazy and actually the gasket is fine, but always good practice to grease the gasket and help retain that water resistance. Once you've put all of the um, gaskets and seals back in place, you want to put the back plate back on. Again, take your time, you don't want to thread those screws. Don't forget to replace those side screws that keep the, the rubber back and the bezel in place. Finally, let's get the straps back on. So let's take a look at the finished result. What do you guys think? Personally, really happy with it. From a screen that was barely readable to something that not only works, but looks pretty damn cool. And that's pretty much all there is to it, guys. Any questions, please ask in the comments below. I'm more than happy to try and help if you get stuck. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more G-Shock goodness. This has been Paul from G-Shocker, and I'll see you next time.